What do you mean by the term Laplace transforms? Well, my name is Rishi Ranju. Welcome to the Backbench Engineering Community, where I make engineering easy for you. So let us ask yourself that obvious question. What do you mean by the term Laplace transform? Well, what's wrong? Well. So let us consider a particular function f of t. So when we say that we have a particular function f of t, this function is said to be in the time domain. So what a Laplace transform does is that a Laplace transform converts this particular function from the time domain to the frequency domain and therefore we will obtain f of s and this f of s is in the frequency domain. This is why we use a particular Laplace transform. That is, a Laplace transform simply converts a function from a time domain to the frequency domain. That is what we obtain by doing a particular Laplace transform. So we all prefer doing simple stuff. We don't like doing complex, complex things. So therefore, in the case of differential equations, while we try to solve differential equations in the time domain, it appears to be very complex. We have to solve very complex things in the time domain. So therefore, in the time domain, we have to solve a lot of complex differential equations. But this particular differential equation can be converted into simple algebraic expressions using a Laplace transform. That is mainly why we use a particular Laplace transforms. That is for the purpose of converting very complex differential equations into simple algebraic expressions so that we can solve those very easily. That is simply why we use a Laplace transform. So here we saw that it a Laplace transform converts a particular function from the time domain to the frequency domain. So therefore, for us to convert a particular function from the time domain to a frequency domain, we have a particular expression for the Laplace transform. So therefore, here the f of s is given as the Laplace transform of f of t. So it can be written like this, L of f of t. So this is how we denote that we are obtaining f of s as the Laplace transform of this particular function in the time domain. And this f of s is given by f of s is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity. This particular function f of t into e raised to minus st dt. So this is the expression for us to find the Laplace transform of a particular function f of t. This is given as f of s is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity f of t into e raised to minus st dt where s is given as s is equal to sigma plus j omega where sigma is the damping factor of a control system and omega is simply the angular frequency. So here the sigma which is a damping factor of a control system determines the stability of that particular control system. So this is simply how we can find the Laplace transform of a function f of t. So that Therefore, the Laplace transform f of s is given as f of s is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity f of t into e raised to minus st dt. As simple as that guys, there is nothing more to it, as simple as that. So therefore now, let us use this expression to find the Laplace transform of a unit step function. So the question is, find the Laplace transform of a unit step function. And unit step function is denoted by u of t. So we have to find the Laplace transform of u of t. So here, the function f of t is equal to u of t, that is the unit step function. But but, but by definition, we know that unit step function u of t is given as u of t is equal to 1 if t is greater than 0 and is equal to 0 when t is less than 0. That is, when we are drawing a particular graph like this, when t is greater than 0, the value of the unit step function will be 1. And when t is less than 0, the value of the unit step function will be 0. So therefore, now here, by applying the formula of a Laplace transform over here, we will get f of s is equal to integral of minus infinity to infinity u 
2 of t into e raised to minus st dt. But, 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 here u of t is equal to 1 when t is greater than 0 and is equal to 0 when t is less than 0. And therefore, from minus infinity to 0, the value of u of t is 0. Because for all the values of t, which is less than 0 over here, the value of u of t is 0. So therefore, from minus infinity to 0, the value of u of t is 0. So therefore, the value of the integral of u of t will also be equal to 0. So therefore, this expression will be equal to f of s is equal to integral of 0 to infinity 1 into e raised to minus st dt. This is what this equation would become. And therefore, this is equal to, on taking the integral, we know the integral of e raised to minus st as e raised to minus st divided by minus s. This is a simple 12 standard mathematics, simple integration. That is, integral of e raised to minus st dt is given as e raised to minus st divided by minus s. So therefore, this we get e raised to minus st divided by minus s. So therefore, minus 1 by s into e raised to minus st. So therefore, the limits are from 0 to infinity. And therefore, on substituting the limits over here, we would get f of s is equal to minus 1 by s into e raised to minus infinity into t minus e raised to minus 0 into t. But e raised to minus infinity becomes 1 by infinity which is equal to 0. And therefore, this would become equal to minus 1 by s into 0 minus e raised to minus 0 t, this is 1. So therefore, this becomes minus 1. And therefore, this becomes minus 1, minus into minus becomes plus. Therefore, this is equal to 1 by s. And therefore, f of s is equal to the Laplace transform of u of t, which is equal to 1 by s. So therefore, this thus is a simple Laplace transform of a particular unit step function. As simple as that, guys. There's nothing more to it. Here, we simply just take the property of a unit step function which states that the value of u of t is equal to 1 when t is greater than 0 and the value of t u of t is equal to 0 when t is less than 0. By simply substituting that, we would get the value of f of s is equal to 1 by s. So this thus is a simple way in which how you can find the Laplace transform of any particular function. So now I will write down the Laplace transform of particular standard functions. So therefore standard functions like sine omega t, cos omega t. So these are the Laplace transforms of certain standard functions. So the Laplace transform of u of t, that is a unit step function, we just saw that it is given as 1 by s. And now the Laplace transform of t is equal to 1 by s squared. And therefore the Laplace transform of t raised to n is given as n factorial divided by s raised to n plus 1. That is the Laplace transform of t raised to n. And then the Laplace transform of e raised to minus a t is given as 1 by s plus a. And that of course omega t is s divided by s squared plus omega squared. And that of sine omega t is omega divided by s squared plus omega squared. And lastly, the Laplace transform of an impulse signal is given as 1. So these are standard Laplace transforms, so standard signals which are given here like this. So now we saw the case in which we would find the Laplace transform of a particular function f of t with the equation f of s is equal to integral of minus infinity to infinity that particular function f of t into e raised to minus st dt. But now we come to another thing which is referred to as an inverse Laplace transform. So as the name suggests it is very simple. Inverse Laplace transform converts a particular signal from the frequency domain back into the time domain. So therefore, it reverts or it undoes whatever transform we are doing with the help of a Laplace transform. That is, when we convert a particular function from the time domain to a frequency domain, an inverse Laplace transform would take that signal back from the frequency domain and put it in the time domain itself. So that is what you refer to as an inverse Laplace transform. So an inverse Laplace transform is given by the formula f of t is equal to 1 by 2 pi j integral sigma minus j omega to sigma plus j omega into f of s into e raised to s t d s. This is the expression for the inverse Laplace transform. But we usually don't use this expression. I'm just telling you for the sake of telling you this. But usually the inverse Laplace transform is done using partial 
fractions so how is that done we'll be discussing that in the next video so i hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as a laplace transform and if you guys found this video informative please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button we'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos so stay tuned stay subscribed until next time i'll see you guys in the next video thank you